yesterday, I spent three hours hanging out with some of my best friends, whom I haven't seen for years. And today, with only three hours of time, I accomplished a major goal in my life, and I feel absolutely amazing. Well, what did I do? Um, well, I'm a gamer, and I play around three hours of League of Legends every day. <laughs> <laughs> Video games define our world. They have played a huge role in my life, and I would not be here today without them. When I was 18 years old, I was diagnosed with a severe and chronic blood disorder that caused me to bleed if I made even the smallest muscle movements. I dropped out of school and was hospitalized. I was told that I would not survive longer than a few days, maybe weeks. Th these were two of the most difficult years I've ever had, not because I was in pain or because treatment was difficult. It was hard because I had lost all hope of accomplishing, of accomplishing anything in life. I had lost contact with all of my friends. I had people who later told me that they thought I was dead. My family suffered alongside me. My parents didn't know what to do or how to make me feel better. We all lived with the constant fear that I could die at any moment. Through these two years, through my loneliness and despair, I turned to the only thing that gave me meaning in life, and that was playing video games. I started playing all sorts of games, such as the online multiplayer game, League of Legends. With over 10,000 hours logged in these games, I made friends from all around the world. These internet friends of mine didn't even speak English. However, they would check up on me every day to making, making sure that I've been taking my medicine and that I've been getting the proper amount of rest. Even more so, one of my internet friends was actually a medical researcher and he connected me with some of the world's best hematologists. With his recommendations, I met with doctors who ultimately gave me critical advice that kept me alive. And the amazing thing is, till this moment, I still don't even know my friend's real name. Throughout the next two years, I slowly began to recover. However, I couldn't help but look back and think to myself, these games like League of Legends were not designed to help me, yet, they did. What if we begin designing video games with the intention to help others? And that's when I began creating meaningful, value-driven video games. I started Serenity Forge, a video game development company here in Boulder, focusing on creating meaningful games. We released a game in 2012 called Loving Life, which is based on the non-fictional story of my near-fatal illness. The game is now used around the nation in classrooms to help inspire students, giving them hope and giving them inspiration. Since then, we have created dozens of games, games that would inspire art, foster education, and promote health. Now, before I dive into the details, I want to ask a quick question. What do we think of when I say the word gamers? Well, maybe your typical teenage boys who are sitting in the basement right now shooting people inside their TVs. Well, the Entertainment Software Association study shows that in 2015, there are 135 million people in the United States who play more than three hours of video games. That's around 42% of the nation's population. Even more so, there are actually more gamers above the age of 50 than there are under the age of 18. <laughs> yeah. And video games are not the boys club by any means, with around 56% of gamers being male and 44% female. There are actually more than double the amount of female gamers above the age of 18 than there are boys 18 or younger. League of Legends alone has 67 million gamers worldwide. That's around 3 million greater than the population of UK or France. What this tells you is that video games are everywhere, played by anyone. And as I dug deeper into how we could push this medium forward and subsequently change so many people's lives, I found five major areas how video games will change our world in the next 10 years. And they are education, environmental sustainability, business operations, scientific research, 
and social impact. Throughout college, I've always wondered if there's a more personal, interactive, and engaging way to learn. I've always found that the best way to learn is through play, and that makes video games the best educational tools. Video games are inherently educational. It just really depends on what the game is really teaching you. You could be learning how to connect colorful bricks next to each other, or you could be learning real-world solutions to real-world problems. A great example of this is a game called Dragon Box that teaches algebra through play. The game features a timid dragon that's hiding inside a box and requires the players to make algebraic computations in order to feed and grow. When playing the game, kids are exposed to all sorts of mathematical computations, order of operations, and often all without even seeing a number on the screen. Inspired by learning through play, we also created a game called Luna's Wandering Stars. Luna's Wandering Stars is an addic addictive puzzle game that plays a lot like Angry Birds. However, we added 100% realistic planetary physics into the game, so when you're playing the game, you're secretly learning rocket science without even realizing it. <laughs> I recently graduated from college, and one of my proudest achievements is earning my, my certificate in socially responsible enterprise. Through my studies, I found that video games are actually amazing tools for environmental sustainability. In 2010, Nissan released their new vehicle, the electric vehicle, the Nissan LEAF, which, is, which has a video game in it designed to change your driving habits. When driving the LEAF, you'll see a small video game displayed on its seven inch LCD screen called Car Wings. The system shows you your driving habits, your distance traveled, and your energy consumed in daily, monthly, and annual reports. However, more importantly, the, just like any other game, when driving the LEAF, the game takes your driving habits and compares it with all the other LEAF drivers on the road. So when you're driving the game, it's almost like you're racing to see who could save the most amount of energy, winning the Platinum LEAF Cup. <laughs> now, as I graduated from college and transitioned into my business, I slowly turned learning through play into working through play. And I found out that video games make amazing business tools as well. Video games, uh, businesses have been using video games for more than a decade. This first started with games like Second Life, where companies are able to host large scale online in-person meetings worldwide. And then later perfected with games like Eve Online, where the game is so complex that real world businesses and real world finances would literally take place inside the game mechanics. Businesses around the world now are using video games for HR training, onboarding, and also even business to business operations. With the recent expansion of virtual reality technology, company CEOs are able to have in-person, face-to-face -face meetings all around the world, essentially in the comfort of their living rooms. A research study that I'm conducting right now shows evidence that the amount of brain processing power that it takes to play a sitting of the game World of Warcraft very closely emulates the same type of brain processing power that it takes to uh, operate at a nine to five job in a typical cubicle. What this means is that in the next few years, you'll begin to see work to be designed to be more like games, turning something that might be boring or unfulfilling into something that is fun, engaging, and challenging. Speaking of challenge, some of the most challenging professions in our society are the medical researchers who work day and night to essentially save lives. Challenge is actually a very unique trait found in video games. And that's right, video games are actually great scientific research tools as well. The best part of video games is that they're fun to play, which means that a well-designed game is going to attract millions of players who essentially work out of leisure. However, an even better designed game is going to take the millions of people's work and with it achieve something great. A good example of this is a game created by the researchers of University of Washington called Fold It. In the game Fold It, players are given computer generated puzzles which are actually molecular protein structures which the players will have to fold to solve. After they fold the puzzles, the data is then sent back to the research labs to be used in real world protein research. 
Within just 10 days of releasing the puzzle in 2011, Folded players deciphered and produced an accurate 3D model of the AIDS-causing Mason Pfizer monkey virus, a problem that had been unsolved in the medical world for the past 15 years. Lastly, there is one final key topic that is near and dear to my heart, and that is the role that video games play in addressing worldwide social issues. A nonprofit organ organization called Free Rice created a web-based game at freerice.com that challenges players to answer word definitions. However, for each correct word definition that you answer, the organization donates 10 grains of rice through the World Food Program to, uh, to essentially world and, uh, end world hunger. The entire system is funded through the small little banner ads that you see at the bottom of the screen. So essentially, this creates a closed system that the players literally generate the money that it takes to feed the impoverished. Since the website's launch in 2007, the organization donated 100 billion grains of rice, feeding over 5 million people worldwide. Video games are not just toys for kids, and we must treat them with a practical perspective. Two players can play side by side virtually in a game of League of Legends, working together to achieve a common goal. They do not need to share the same language, the same culture, or even the same world beliefs. It doesn't matter if they're American, Chinese, Israeli, or Palestinian. Your next Nobel Peace Prize winners are no longer just going to be the influential artists or the policy generators, but maybe it's the kid who is in a garage right now working on the next big game that connects the world through play. When I was going through chemotherapy, when I was on my deathbed, I had no hope of a future. In the end, video games saved my life, and they just might save yours, too. Thank you. <laughs>